Hallelujah. Welcome to Amazing Grace. I'm Pastor Kofi Osei here once again with you to share the incorruptible word of God. Today we're continuing on finishing up actually the series we started several weeks ago entitled Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You see, it's been such a tremendous journey because I believe that, you know, in life, this day and age where life is full of uncertainties, that people don't know who to trust in, you know, that there is somebody that you can anchor your trust in that he will never disappoint you. You know, we've talked about so many things, you know, discuss how if God can be trusted, why we should trust God and what the benefits why we should trust God. But today I'm going to conclude that why we should trust God. No, because in life we know that trust is something that you just don't give it or you just don't receive it, you earn trust. See, so has God been able to earn your trust that you should trust in him? So we're going to look at the faithfulness of God, that he's so faithful that he changed not. You know, and if you want somebody that you can trust, you want somebody who is sure, you know, who is secured, who is safe, that you can anchor your trust in. See, you cannot trust your feelings. Why? Because your feelings keep fluctuating and changing. You cannot trust other people because they are here today and tomorrow they are gone. You see, you, you can't trust men because a man can give you a promise today and by tomorrow he will change his mind. But God changed not his mind. God is a faithful God. Everything that he said from the beginning has come to pass and he's still holding strong to his word that he will never change because he said that he will, as long as he has promised his word, he ensures that he watches over his word to perform them. So when you know these things about God, then it makes it easy to trust in him. And so today we're going to take a quick look through the scriptures. You know, there are so many instances, but time will not permit us to look at all of them. So we're going to look at a few to see how faithful our God is. That he promises that he made in times past to people that they've all come to pass. And that there are certain things that are present in our life, in, you know, in this world right now, that points to the fact that the promises that he made of old are still holding true. So before anything else, let us just establish our foundational scripture, which we've been using all through this series, from the book of Proverbs, the chapter of 3, reading from the verse of 5 and 6. And let's see what the Bible says. It says that Proverbs chapter 3, the verse of 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not upon your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. See, I'm going to read that same scripture from the Amplified Version. And let's see, it will share more light on what we're talking about. It says, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know recognize and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths hallelujah so say trust the lord with all your heart what does it mean to trust with your heart see when you trust with your heart you trust without questioning you trust without reasoning see many a times we even the world says that the heart is not so smart why because the heart is not judgmental the heart is not a, a critical the heart doesn't analyze stuff you know unlike the mind where everything has to make sense to the mind everything has to add up that one plus one has to be two but the heart will tell you that one plus one is ten and here you believe it as the bible said that one shall, one shall chase a thousand and two shall chase what ten thousand it doesn't make sense if one chases a thousand two shall should chase what two thousand but the bible says two shall chase what ten thousand but we believe it so as we believe it with our heart it's not something that has to make sense to our mind but because we believe with our heart even though we don't know it doesn't make sense to the natural mind but we say well it's a spiritual principle therefore we believe it you know, some, something like, for example, a spiritual principle like you sow one seed and that one seed can, can germinate to become a tree that will bear you a hundred fruits and in each of these fruits will have maybe 10 or 20 seeds in them. So therefore, that one seed can become a thousand seeds. 
See, to the natural mind or to the to the physical mind, it does not make sense. But when you take it into the spiritual, it makes sense. So when the Bible tells you to trust in the Lord with your heart and lean not upon your own understanding or your own mind, it's telling you trust him because he knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning. Here is the God. When, when he met Abraham, in the days of old, when Abraham had nothing, living in, a, in an idol-worshipping society, God called him to leave this country and go. Going where he didn't know. Imagine you making a journey and you don't know where you are going. That's what I'm talking about, trusting with your heart. Abraham left his kindred, his family, and was going to an unknown land, a land that he didn't even know where the land was located. So I believe when he went to tell his family that I'm leaving to go to a land and they asked him, Which, where is this land? He said, I don't know. You don't know? Yes, I don't know. I believe they will be thinking, well, this man is going crazy. There's something wrong with him. That, I believe that's why they asked Lot to go with him. Because it didn't make sense to the natural mind. But he trusted with his heart. And the Bible said it was imputed to him for righteousness. So when he left from there and he was going, he didn't know where he was going. But because he trusted in, the, in God, God directed his path. All through the journey. Until he came to a point, God said to him, listen, I'm going to give you a child. And Abraham was old, was what, 75 years. 75 years, I'm going to have a child? He said, yeah, if only you believe me. He said, well, I trust you. I believe. And guess what? It came to pass. He had a son known as Isaac. And then Isaac, and then God also said to him, your children are going to be in bondage, in captivity, in slavery for 400 years. And after that, I will take them out of the bondage and then I will give them, I'll bring them to this very land where you are standing on. And that's where they're going to possess this land. And guess what? He also promised Abraham that, listen, I'm going to be your, 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 your shield. I'm going to protect you. Imagine Abraham, a nomad, a shepherd who had a whole lot of stuff. The Bible said that God blessed him with cattle and sheep and everything. And remember, he was moving from place to place. So a person like that needed protection or else other armed robbers and people would just gang up on him, kill him and take his stuff. But guess what? God protected him all through everywhere that he went. People saw the hand of God upon his life that nobody could touch him. In the end, he lived to a good old age. He died, his children came over. And to cut a long story short, 400 years after the death of Abraham, Moses came on the scene. The promise that God made to Abraham it's time for Moses to come and fulfill it. He took the children out of bondage, out of Egypt, to the promised land. And guess what? They are living on that land as I speak to you right now, in the land of Israel. If you don't believe me, go to Israel and you see the temple that Solomon built. It is still standing to today as a monumental proof that the God who is in heaven, everything that he has said will come to pass. And it has happened. See, when you go to Israel, I've never been there and I wish that, oh, the Lord will grant me the grace and the ability to do that one day. It's my heart desire that one day I will. And I believe I will. So when you go to Israel, those that have been there say that you go to the temple, even though there's been some ruins, but it's still evident. It's standing there. Solomon built it. I, 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 David had the idea to build it. Oh my God, David, oh hallelujah, what a man. David was a man after God's own heart. David was a man who was a worshiper who loved God with his whole heart. That everything that David was, if you read this, the book of Psalms, it's full of nuggets. The truths about how David loved and knew God. To understand that God had a covenant with him. He said, well, I will establish my covenant forever with just, uh, David. So we see all through these things that the God that we are talking about can be trusted. Look at the Jews, the children of Israel. In America here, according to statistics, the Jewish population is only 2%. But guess what? They control over 50% of this nation's wealth. Everywhere they go, the blessing of God is upon their lives. Why? Because the God that he promised, they change it not. This is the God I'm telling you to trust in. This is the God that I'm, the Bible is telling you to trust in, okay? Because there are proofs from beginning to end that he's faithful. Everything he says, he abides by it. 
It's not a man that can change his mind that he will say this today and then tomorrow change. You can't trust a person like that. But somebody who has proofs, who has track record to show that this person or this individual is someone that all true scriptures or all true life. Everything he said. Look at God. The one who hung the sun on nothing. The one who hung the moon on nothing. When he created the beginning and caused the sun to be the light of the day. Up to today, the sun is still shining. He said each and every one of them in their courses. Not even one time would they crash. And he said that I have a covenant with them. And this covenant is that they shall revolve around the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the, the earth. And they will, I mean, stay continually. The, the, the earth will revolve around the sun as the moon revolves around the, the, the earth. All these things God established and they are still present today. Why can't you trust in a God like this? He is trustworthy. So when the Bible tells you to trust in him, there's every, there's so many proofs. See, I can sit here all day and give you proofs numerous occasions and things that were said and has been done for example look in the days of daniel when Dan god gave daniel a dream no it first happened to nebuchadnezzar the king when he had a dream of that golden image that had the golden head you know and 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 the torso was a different metal the legs were different metal and so all those metals there were four different kingdoms in that vision Right, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had, starting from the Babylonian Empire, then to the Medo Persian Empire, then to the Grecian Empire or the Greek Empire, then to the Roman Empire. And guess what? This was a prophetic word that was given about 700 years before it happened. And guess what? It everything happened in the chronological order that God gave them. You know, a typical example, the one that stands out so clear was Alexander the Great. He took over from the Medo Persians. The Medo Persians took over from uh, 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 the, the Babylonians. And then when Jesus came on, it was a Roman Empire. Why? Because this was something that was prophesied years, 700 years before it happened. This is a God that I'm telling you to trust in because He is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. When He came to David, when David was anointed as king and he came to know God in a very special way and realized that there was no one like unto the God of heavens because as a shepherd at the backside of the desert with all the sheep he was most of the time by himself so he had all the time in this world to meditate on the word to meditate upon God who God is that's how come he was able to write numerous psalms because all these psalms were his reflection on who God is. And if you read the psalms, my favorite one, oh no, actually one of my favorites, is the psalm of uh, Psalm 8. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read something to you. This is not pla wasn't planned, but the Lord just dropped in my spirit and I'm going to be obedient. So open your Bible with me to the book of Psalms. And we're going to read the psalm of 8. Psalm 8, and I'll be reading from the verse of 1. Psalm 8, the verse of 1. It says, Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. This Remember, this is David speaking. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. So, this is me, I'm imagining. Where, what is the setting of these Psalms? And I'm going to tell you. This is my own personal belief, all right? Imagine David by himself, you know, with a sheep at night in the desert. The sheep sleeping. She's, he's awake, looking in the sky, seeing the sun and, I mean, the moon and the stars. And he's just meditating on, on the, 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 the magnitude, the, 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 you know, how big our God is. And out of that... He wrote this. And now listen, with that in mind, listen to the psalm, what he says. He said, Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, right? Who has set thy glory above the heavens. I mean, the heavens declare your glory. Say, out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest 
still the enemy and the avenger. Then he went on. Say, when I consider, say, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. Listen to this. Say, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars. Hear that? The moon and the stars. The moon don't come out until the night time. And the stars don't come out in the night. So you know from that statement, the moon and the stars, meaning that he was talking about a night time. Right? The moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man? That thou art mindful of him. See, when David saw all these things and he, start, he started meditating and reflecting on it, he said, if you can do all these things, then who am I that you, 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 you care so much about me? What can I do? What have I done? To deserve all this beauty, all this grace that you, 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 you have adorned your heavens with. This is what David was thinking. See, say, what is man that thou art so mindful of? And the son of man that thou hast visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower. So no, I can go on and on. But you see, the more you meditate on God and you reflect on his creation, the, the work of his hands, the more you realize that there is no one like him. That all shall pass except him. Everything else shall pass away except him. So if you want any surety, if you want any assurance in life, it will only come from the one who is secure, the one who changeth not. The Bible said that those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which can never be moved. Why? Because if you trust in a God who can never be moved, then you will never be moved. Because the object of your trust is forever secure. Oh, hallelujah. See, I can go on with this series for a whole maybe a year. Because there's so many nuggets to judge out of this. But I'm praying God and believing that you are receiving this word. Somebody called me a couple of weeks ago. After listening to one of the programs you called and, and start sharing some things with me. And I was so, I was so blessed. Another person sent me a, a message on, on, you, uh, on, on, on Facebook. That he just, she just finished watching the program and how much it blessed him. Listen, there are so many things we can talk about. But time will not permit. But all I'm sharing with you is that our God is faithful. Now let's take our, our next scripture, which is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm, uh, Psalm 108, I mean Psalm 89, sorry, the verse of 34. Let's hear what it says. Psalm 89, the verse of 34. This is God speaking. He said, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my mouth, or my lips, sorry. I'll read it again. He said, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. What is he talking about? God is giving you the assurance that my covenant, which is his word, will I not break. I will not break my word. I will not change my word. As, as long as I have spoken it, it will not change. What cannot? Oh my God. Why can't you trust in a God like this? Who has given you his word that he's not going to break his covenant. He's not going to break his word. That the words that are proceeded out of his mouth will forever stand sure. And we see that happening even in our life today. Numerous things that he has said are still happening. You know, so trust in God because he's faithful. He's a covenant keeping God. He gave you a covenant through his son Jesus Christ. He said, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed indeed. So if you are in Christ, that means you are what? The seed of Abraham because God said to Abraham, in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And who is that seed? Jesus Christ. So the promise he made to Abraham now has extended to you and I because of what? Christ Jesus. Who is the seed? The same promise he made to Isaac. He made the same promise to Jacob. And then he made the same promise to Joseph. And he made the same promise to David. That is how come the Bible calls Jesus the son of David. Because David, I mean, Jesus came out of the loins, the, 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 the natural descendancy of what? David. Right, so you see, everything that God said, if you look at the book of Matthew, 
the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you see David right there. So, our God can be trusted. Yes. You, we've, we've, we've had a, a dialect, you know, I mean, a dialogue, sorry, about this. Can God be trusted? Why are the, the, the pros and cons why he can be trusted? Why, you know, and so on and so forth. But all these things just to let you know that he can be trusted. See, many people or many believers has accepted Jesus as their savior, but he's not their Lord yet. I'll say that again. Many Christians has accepted Jesus as their, as their savior, but he is not their Lord as yet. Because there's a big difference. See, as your savior, yes, you are saved. You know, converted from your old nature to your new nature. And that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. But yes, you go to heaven. But what you do on this earth here determines if Jesus is reigning as Lord in your heart or not. Are you living for Christ? Are you living according to the principles that he taught? See, there are two things. Jesus... And the principles that he taught. If you accept Jesus, yes, it's good. But if you don't live by the principles he taught, you will not see the, you know, the, the manifestation of the abundant love that he promised to give you. And one of the ways of living according to the precepts or the principles he taught is by trusting in God with your whole heart. Not with your, men, your mental reasoning because that one will, will always argue with God. That's why the Bible says that you know, the natural mind is an, you know, the things of the spirit are foolishness to the natural mind. Why? Because the natural mind will try to reason out everything. That will not make sense. You know, to come and tell me that somebody who died 2,000 years ago, that his blood has saved me. Does that make sense to you? No, but that's the truth. It's a spiritual truth. If, I mean, time will not permit me to go into that, the significance of that saying. What it really means. Why his blood. Because the blood that runs through the veins of Jesus Christ is the blood of God himself. Because God, Jesus didn't have an earthly father. And we know scientifically that the blood of the father is the one that runs through the veins of the child. So you see, there are so many things that point to the father God can be trusted. Many stuff, many things. But you can start first of all by getting to know God through his word. Because God can be known by studying the word. Everything that I'm telling you right now is over the years working with him, reading the scriptures, you know, and going by, living by the principles that the Bible teaches. See, if you want to see the power of the word, of the word, live by it. If you don't live it, if you don't practice it, you will not know how effective it is. You understand? So, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding or your own mind or your own reasoning because that is very, very limited. And in all your ways, not in some of your ways, in everything that you do, let the word guide you. He will direct your path. If you study the word and get to know God through his word, when God speaks to you, you will know that it is God speaking because it will align with his word. But when you don't know his word, you will not even know when he's speaking to you. So you can't even trust because you don't even know the word that you, you, you're supposed to trust in. When you don't know the word of God, you will not know God. Because God is revealed to us through his word. Amen. So I'm entreating you with all that is happening in this world, with all the chaos, all the, uncertain, all the uncertainties. Today they say, oh, there's a hurricane this, a hurricane Irene, and all kind of names they're given to them. People are, are, are living in fear. But I'm telling you, if you trust in God, all fear will dissipate. Why? Because you know that you trust in the one who knows all things and who controls all things. You understand? I hope you are being blessed. But if you are not born again, this is yet a better opportunity for you. That I don't know this God you are talking about. But I want to have a taste of his goodness. So I want to surrender my life to him. If you have made that decision, simply repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me with your blood. I believe that you died on the cross and rose on the third day, that I might live and be saved. 
So therefore, I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. And brethren, if you have prayed that prayer, I believe that you've been born again. You know what? It's your, only your spiritual being that has been renewed, that has been reborn. That is a one-time event. It will never happen again. It's one time. But then, you know that you are a three-part person, a being. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So now, the next thing to do is to desire the sincere milk of the word of God, which means you have to yearn, study the word of God. I didn't say read it, study it. Take your time. Pray when you are reading it that the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, will bring understanding to you. And pray also for the grace to apply what you are studying. And when you do that and you keep renewing your mind on a continual basis, that renewal of your mind is a process. It's a lifetime process that we do on a daily basis. You never grow old out of that. Just like you never grow old from eating food. You always eat food. You need food till you die. You're going to eat every blessing the same way. As you feed your physical being, so also you should feed your spiritual being. Because the word of God is the food to your spirit. Just like a newborn baby needs milk to grow, so also your spiritual being that has been born now needs the milk of the word to grow. Hallelujah. And when you read the word of God, God speaks to you. And you in return speak back to him through prayer. Learn to pray. And then finally find yourself a good Bible teaching church. Where you will be taught the word of God. To apply the, the word in your life. Then the power of God will manifest in your life. I believe that you've been blessed by this series. If you have anything to say, just write to me or send me an email or whatever through my address on the screen below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.